Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I want to take a couple minutes to talk about the FG-42 and its use, its actual use as a sniper rifle. Because I think the reality of this situation, these, this question, is a bit clouded by the frequency with which you see scopes mounted on FG-42s. And the thing is, the scope makes the gun look really super cool. Uh, especially the early dovetail style mounts that are kind of swept back and cool looking, and the first pattern ones like this that are brass give a really cool element of color to the gun. And what you get is a lot of people, probably the significant majority of people who own real FG-42s would love to put scopes on them, and at any opportunity if they're able to find original scopes, hey that thing looks great, let's throw it on there. The same goes with grenade launchers, they actually made a muzzle spigot grenade launcher for the FG-42. They were absolutely used in combat, how many of them is unknown, but man it sure looks cool to stick that thing on the end of a real rifle, and so you will see an out, an, a disproportionate number of original rifles in collector hands with scopes. Because basically every scope that can be found gets stuck onto a rifle. In reality there were probably not more than a couple hundred FGs actually issued with scopes. And most of those would be the later pattern guns, not the early guns like this. So to give a little bit of a timeline and some background information, uh, the, the milled receiver FG, the first pattern like this, which technically is the type E, there were four other earlier variations uh, through the development process, they finally got to the E, and that's what first got into serious production. That was first available in like January of 1943, very early in 43. And the scope available at the time for the standard German sniper rifles was the ZF-39, uh, which was a, a like a totally conventional large commercial style scope. And that's not going to suit a deliberately compact paratroopers rifle like this, but the designation for the FG-42, or the, uh, the requirements for the FG-42, called for it to be capable of mounting a telescope so that it could be used as a marksman's rifle. This is because the Luftwaffe wanted this thing to be used as anything, uh, a replacement for any small arm uh, used by the infantry. So it had to be an infantry rifle, a sniper's rifle, and a light machine gun all at the same time. And Louis Stanga, who designed this thing, did a remarkably good job at fulfilling that basically impossible requirement. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, the, the typical scope that was on the the ZF-39 sniper rifles, which were Car 98 ks at that time, was not going to suffice. And so Voigtlander uh, came up with a new design of scope specifically to use for the FG-42, and it was designated, get this, the ZFG-42 <laughs> scope. Uh, and it was largely patterned after the Soviet PU scopes, which were rugged, inexpensive, and effective. Um, they weren't very fancy, but they certainly did work. And Voigtlander decided to copy that thing. And the Problem is, they didn't do a very good job on the first run through. Uh, at trials, the ZFG 42 scopes were found uh, to get foggy internally fairly quickly. The lenses would come loose and get not just fog, but they'd lose clarity because the lenses would move. Uh, and perhaps most embarrassingly, the adjustment knobs, the turrets uh, to adjust the windage and elevation, had a tendency after only minor shock or jarring or bumping to shear off the scope. So that's a problem. Now uh, there were at least some of these manufactured, and some of them were issued, but probably very few. Um, and what happens is the, the scope is developed about the same time as the rifle, they're issued together, and the rifle is going to become, not obsolete, but the rifle is going to become replaced by the later pattern of FG-42 because the specific alloys required to make that milled receiver are difficult for Germany to acquire, and they're becoming really critically important materials, and so anything that the German military can do with stamped components instead of this much more expensive, much scarcer, uh, good alloy for milled, hardenable uh, steel, they're going to try and replace with stamped components, and the FG-42 is one of these things. Basically even at the time that this early pattern is going into mass production, it's going into production only as a stopgap, and they're already designing the stamped version that will replace it. But it's going to take until basically early 1944 until the stamped version of the FG-42 is available. 
Well, it is after these actually get introduced, but before the stamped version comes out, that the German the Voigtlander comes back and redesigns its scope and comes up with the ZF4. And this would become a standard scope used for basically all marksmen's rifles across the German military. So it would uh, it would get used on the K98K, it would then much more recognizably get used on the G43 slash K43 semi-auto rifles, and it is the scope that would be used on the second pattern, the stamped receiver FG42s. Now when they went to the second pattern, uh, the receiver design changed, the scope mounts had to change, because an early pattern scope mount will not fit on a late pattern rifle. And the FG42, like a lot of German guns, was kind of just a disaster of production logistics all the way right until the end of the war. There were, I believe, if I have the count right, five different variations of scope mounts made for the second pattern FG42. Some of them experimental, some of them production, but they just couldn't quite get their mind made up. Uh, now they would all use the ZF4 scope, however, which while still not a great scope, it was a lot better by World War II standards. It was more durable, it was more economical to produce, and it didn't have some of the really embarrassing faults like the turrets shearing off. So there will be a mount rather like this, except it was made out of a heavy gauge sheet metal um, that was used for the second pattern FGs, and there was also a double, a more uh, typical uh, two ring mount that was developed for the late pattern FGs. Although interestingly a lot of the ones that are actually out there are actually post-war manufacture, not original ones. And this stems, I believe, from the fact that on an early FG42 like this one, if you want to mount a scope on it and it to be correct, you have to have the ZFG42 scope, which is extremely difficult to find. There are very few of them because they had those problems. Interestingly, this reproduction, this is an SMG reproduction scope and mount, is actually using a Soviet PU scope, which um, fits the bill largely because that's what the ZFG42 scope was based on, which is pretty cool. And it's using a PU that is that doesn't have all the faults of the original German scopes. I, I think that's a really neat little sort of coincidental use of Russian equipment on a reproduction German rifle. At any rate, if you want to have an appropriate scope on a second pattern FG42, then you just need a ZF4, and that those are widely available. Now there are a few things to note if you want to find an authentic legitimate ZF4 used on an FG42, uh, it will probably, a lot of them, were actually calibrated for the barrel length of the FG42 and marked with an L, either on the turret body, uh, or the scope body, or on the elevation turret, because the calibration for the range the range drop is slightly different for these rifles than it would be for a K43 or a G43. In addition, a, a lot, not all, but a bunch of the FG42 second pattern scopes are actually engraved FG42 and a serial number, and this is most likely because of this stupid variety of scope mounts that were not interchangeable with each other or with different iterations of receiver mount, you know, you get the scope fit, and then just mark the serial number on it, and don't ever try to interchange the scopes. And that probably accounts for the FG42 markings on some of the ZF4 scopes. There was no ZF4 scope specifically for the FG42, aside from um, an elevation calibration cam. So how many of these were actually issued? We really don't know. Probably a couple hundred out of a grand total of about 8,500 FG42 rifles that were manufactured in total. Um, they were actually making the FG42 right up until the very last days um, of the war, the last days of Germany being in the war, um, right up to the, the end of the Battle of Berlin. And really, like at the end of the war, you can forget about trying to get a scope with the rifle. Even earlier than that, the issue of scope seems to be relatively scarce, just based on the, the number of surviving guns compared to surviving scopes, and that's why a lot of people look to reproductions, and unfortunately fakes, uh, for FG42 scopes. At any rate, I think this one's really cool, and I wanted to touch on the actual use. Oh, um, the one other thing we should talk about briefly is the accuracy, because this is intended to be a sniper's rifle. Is it actually that accurate? The answer is no, it was not. Uh, it was required to be equivalent in accuracy to the K98K, which means about four minute of angle. Uh, looking through a variety of German testing reports, you will find best case uh, 
uh, like either horizontal, they, they measured groups as horizontal, dispersion, and vertical. And pretty much the best you will ever find for one of those discrete measurements is about three and a half minute of angle. And they go up to five or six minute of angle. In post-war testing in the US, Aberdeen Proving Grounds tested a second pattern FG with a telescopic sight, uh, and they got like 5.8 inch groups, a 5.8 inch 10 shot group at 100 yards. Uh, today this would be considered abysmal accuracy. At the time this was reasonable, like they only expected 4 minute from a Car 98K as a sniper's rifle, or as a marksman's rifle, and so this was acceptable. But anyone who thinks today that an FG42, because it's fancy and looks cool and it's you know cutting edge German small arms technology from World War II, if you think that makes it a a rifle with modern equivalent accuracy, you are going to be disappointed when you actually take the thing out and shoot it. So that I think pretty much covers everything on that question. I thought it was interesting to look into. Hopefully you guys agree. Thanks for watching.